everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to a very special edition of the Jazz Albums Review Series. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the solo debut albums from members of one of the greatest and most legendary bands of all time in the jazz fusion genre. And a band that's quite frankly, in my opinion, needs no introduction whatsoever. I am talking about, of course, the one and only the Chick Corea Electric Band. So, traditionally, what you would normally see from me on this series is I'm either talking about a brand new album, or an old album, or a live album, or an album that nobody has ever heard of before, or an artist's solo catalogue, or a band's entire catalogue, but never before have I ever discussed a band and its members' solo debut albums. So this is going to be something completely different, and I'm hoping to do something like this again in the near future. And I thought, what better band to start with by talking about its members' solo debut albums than the Chick Corea Electric Band. So as everyone knows already, Chick Corea formed the Electric Band in 1985, which started out originally as a trio comprised of Chick Corea, John Patitucci and Dave Weckl. Then it became a quartet with the addition of Scott Henderson and Scott Henderson would leave the Electric Band not too long after. Frank Gambale would replace Scott Henderson and then Eric Marinfall would be added to the band's lineup as well. And throughout the Electric Band's history and its various different incarnations, when you think of the Electric Band, you think of the classic lineup, which is comprised of Chick Corea, John Patitucci, Dave Weckl, Frank Gambale, and Eric Marinfall. So by the mid 80s, various electric band members would start to release their own albums under their name. Now, Frank Gambale is a bit of a different case because prior to joining the Chick Corea Electric Band, Frank Gambale was already established as a name and already put out a couple of albums prior to joining the Electric Band. But Patatucci, Marinfall and Weckl, who had never recorded or released any albums under their names were starting to forge their own identities and establish their own solo careers. So for today's special edition, I am going to be taking a look at each Electric Band member's debut albums from Frank Gambale, John Patitucci, Eric Marinfall and Dave Weckl. And as always, I am going to be talking about each album individually, and I'll choose which one I think is the best debut album. Not an easy challenge, as I love all of these albums. They're all fantastic. They're all well produced and well recorded. Obviously, there are some that are a little bit better than others, but what I have learned after listening to each debut album is how different each electric band member are to one another. They all have their own diverse personality. They all have their own unique style and they all have a very unique approach to the way they play their music and their instruments. Now, whenever you hear any of these guys, you know, within five seconds who it is because each electric band member has their own distinct identity and their own sound. And they all have very different approaches to the way they play their music. Frank Gambale brings more of a rockier approach to his music. John Patitucci, he has more of a chamber feel to his music. Weckl brings more of a fusion flavor to his music. And Eric Marinfall, he brings more of a pop, smooth jazz approach to his music. And it's a true testament and showcase to 
what each electric band member brings to the table. And obviously when they all come together to play with Chikuri, it's pure magic. And as I said, all of these albums are very different. At the same time, there are similarities. Obviously, you can hear the influence of Chick Career in the music, which goes about saying. But at the same time, you know, these four albums could not be any more different from one another. And as I mentioned earlier, each guy brings something very different to their music. And before we go any further, I want to dedicate this special edition to the following people out there. Eric Porter, George Lemay, the Musical Brothers, Mikhail Avzel Ismail, Mark David, and Carmelo Stella, and the lovely and very talented Marie Ginocchio. So this is dedicated to you guys. Hope you enjoy this. So with that all said, let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into this. We're going to start with the first debut album, which came out in 1985 from guitarist Frank Gambali. And this one is called Brave New Guitar. So Brave New Guitar is the first album from Frank Gambali. And this album came out long before Frank Gambali joined the electric band in fact around this time chick career was just forming the electric band so frank gambali and chick career's paths had yet to cross and i suppose in a way when you listen to frank gambali's music you can kind of hear the sound that would become a very big important part of the electric band's musical identity so it's no surprise that Frank Gambali would end up in the electric band because, as I said, he pretty much had that sound, you know, long before Chick Corea even thought of the electric band. And Brave New Guitar, in a way, serves as an introduction to what Frank Gambali, as a guitarist, is going to be all about. And although some of his later albums are much more rockier, this album does still pack a hell of a punch, but it's a little bit on the laid back side. It's a bit funky, but still highly enjoyable with some unbelievable guitar playing from Frank Gimbali and a great showcase of his legendary sweet picking technique. So we got featured on this album. We've got Frank Gimbali, of course, on guitar. We got Steve Kirschnick on bass, Mark Gasparo on keyboards, John Cross on saxophone and flute, Jack Kelly on drums, Steve Reed on percussion from the Rippingtons, and Ki Akagi on piano, who is featured on one track. But this is an excellent debut album from Frank Gambali. Not an easy album to track down, but if you can find it, it's definitely worth listening to if you're looking to get into Frank Gambali for the first time. And I like it. I think it's a really good album and some great tracks on here as well. So we've got the opener, Fee Fi Fo Funk, which is a fantastic opener. Really helps set the tone for what this album is going to be all about. Blues for Hollywood is excellent. Credits Reference Blues is brilliant. Song for My Family is great. Spending Sunday with You, classic Frank Gambali. Weddington Street, another great track. Alone Together, Excellence, and A Touch of Brazil. Brilliant music from start to finish. And as I said, if you're looking to get into Frank Gambali, this is definitely the one to start with. And a very good, strong debut album from one of the greatest guitar players of all time. So the standout tracks for me are Fee Fi Fo Funk, Song for My Family. Spending Sunday with You, Alone Together, and A Touch of Brazil. Tremendous stuff and a great strong debut album from Frank Gambali. And Frank Gambali is the only musician who has played in both career led ensembles, The Electric Band and Return to Forever. And he's also guested on some of other Chick Career's solo projects, but a very important collaborator for Chick Career, 
and as I said, one of the greatest guitar players of all time. So there you have it. Frank Gambale, Brave New Guitar, a strong debut album, in my opinion. Tremendous stuff. Love it. So we move on to the next debut album, which came out in 1988, this time from bassist John Patitucci. And this one is simply the debut album, self-titled. So the John Patitucci you hear on this album is very different to the one we hear these days. John Patitucci's self-titled album is a perfect showcase for his versatility on both the electric and acoustic bass, although the electric bass is much more prominent and front and center than the acoustic bass, although the acoustic bass is featured on a couple of tracks. And for me, in my honest opinion, John Patitucci could very well be the most important member of the electric band because you really get a real appreciation and understanding of why Patatushi was Korea's go-to guy, why he was featured on all of Korea's projects. And this album combines the best of both worlds. It has the fast-paced energy of the electric band and the laid-back warmth of the acoustic band all rolled into one. And this is kind of like a continuation of what the electric band were doing at the time. And it's more or less an extension of the band's excellent recording, Eye of the Beholder. It's very laid back, at times funky, hard hitting, very elegant and very classy as well. And there's so many different influences as well. I often said before, out of all the electric band members, I find John Patitucci to be the most diverse because he's not afraid of trying different styles. And there's plenty of different styles on this album. Now, I did say earlier, John Patitucci does bring more of a chamber feel to his music. But for his first album, it pretty much combines all the influences of the electric band and the acoustic band as well. And for me, it's just absolutely amazing. So featured on this album, we've got Chick Corea, Michael Brecker, Peter Erskine, Dave Weckl, Vinnie Carlotta, John Beasley, David Whitten, and Rick Risso. So you've got some pretty big names. You've got three of the greatest drummers in the world, one of the greatest piano players in the world, and one of the greatest tenor sax players in the world. So when you've got names like that, you know it's going to be good. And John Patitucci utilizes all of the featured artists on his album and showcases their skills to the fullest and lets these guys do their thing and gives them plenty of space. But this is still very much Patitucci's album and I love it. It's just absolutely excellent. And all of the compositions are written and composed by John Patitucci with the exception of two tracks, one co-composition by John Patitucci and Chick Corea, and one Chick Corea contribution as well. But I love it. I absolutely love it. A very strong debut album, and it doesn't disappoint. I didn't find out about this album till years later. By that point, I had most of Patitucci's stuff, with the exception of the first two albums. But when I heard this one, I was absolutely blown away. I still couldn't believe this was actually the same guy. You know, it was just amazing. So we got the funky opener, Growing, which features Rick Risso on vocals. Very much like a funky Brazilian pop track. Very much in the style of what GRP and Lee Ritzner was doing at the time. But still very good. We've got the hard-hitting, fast-paced wind sprint with great sax work from Brecker and hard-hitting drumming from Dave Weckl. Searching Finding featuring Korea, Brecker, Erskine and Beasley. Say No More doesn't get any better than that, which features elegant piano playing from Korea, soulful sax work from Brecker and 
John Beasley providing bass synthesizer, which almost operates like an acoustic player. Absolutely brilliant. And Erskine, he just knows how to make everything feel great. One of the greatest drummers of all time. And Patatushi, he's just right there, front and centre. We've got Bio Bio, which for me features one of the greatest drumming performances from Vinnie Colata. He's just all over this track. Same with Chick Corea. He is all over this track with elegance, piano playing. And Patatushi, he's just burning it up on the six string bass. One of the most dynamite tracks of the entire album. Change of Season, which could have easily have come from an electric band album. And you should hear some of the live bootlegs where the electric band actually plays this track. It's just absolute killer stuff. Then we got the Haunting Our Family, which is more of a solo bass track by Patatucci with Korea providing sync levier percussion. Absolutely beautiful. Then we got the Atmospheric Peace and Quiet Time featuring Brecker and Patatucci trading unison lines. Absolutely lovely. Then we got the Hard Hitting Crest Line, which again could have easily have come from an electric band album. Absolutely amazing drumming from Vinnie Calata. Great piano playing from Chick. Great bass playing from Patatucci. And Beasley and Whitten just working together like keyboard orchestra and they play a very big part in this album as well you know i talk about how big of a part korean Kalata play on this album but I tell you what beastly and witten together you know they almost operate like a mini orchestra then we got zaragoza which again could have easily have come from an electric band album and sounds very similar to no zone this sees patatucci playing a arco melody on the bass with his bow and it's just absolutely dynamite stuff then we got the three bonus tracks then and now which for me features one of michael brecker's greatest sax performances patatucci does take more of a back seat on this track but it's still red hot and brecker is just a machine on that track then we got the very soulful ballad Killeen, which it pretty much combines both the electric band and the acoustic band, and it's a trio track. It's just absolutely classy. Career, he just makes everything sound great, as does Erskine. And Patatucci's performing double duty on electric and acoustic bass, and they're both overdubbed. So Patatucci's soloing, but then he's also playing the bass lines on the acoustic bass. Just tremendous stuff. And then we got the very laid back closer review. Absolutely lovely and a very nice peaceful way to end the debut album. Very strong debut from John Patatucci. Doesn't disappoint. Highly recommended. Love it. Standout tracks for me are Growing, Wind Sprints, Searching, Finding, Via Bio, Change of Season, Our Family, Zaragoza and Kaleem Buck. The whole album from top to bottom is just remarkably strong. No weak track at all. And wow, just excellent stuff. So there you have it. John Patatucci, the self-titled album. Very strong debut album for one of the greatest bass players of all time. Absolutely love this. Probably my favourite John Patatucci album of his entire catalogue. Love this one so much. So we move on to the next debut album, which also came out in 1988, this time from saxophonist Eric Merenfall. And this one is called Voices of the Heart. So Voices of the Heart is very much in the style of smooth jazz, but leaning more towards pop music. And unlike... Patatucci and Gambali's debut albums. Voices of the Hearts from Eric Merenfall is a very laid back album, and there are influences of the electric band. There are also influences of Brazilian music as well. And it's a great album. It's one of my favorite 
Eric Marinfall albums of all time, and he's my favourite sax player. I kind of feel that with this album, although very good, I feel that you can hear someone still trying to find their way. Now, Downbeat panned this album and said it was pretty much like a David Sanborn type of album. And I can understand why people would say that because of the alto sax, but it's still very enjoyable. It's kind of like a continuation of the electric band, but much more laid back. It does sound at times like Eye of the Beholder, but at times also it leans more towards the style of what Lee Rittner was doing at the time. There's even little influences of what the Rippingtons were doing, which of course Eric Marinford would go on to play with the Rippingtons many years later. But it's not one of those albums it packs a punch. It, it, it doesn't do that here. It's a very enjoyable, easy listening kind of album, but still really good. I think Voices of the Heart is a very good, strong effort from Eric Marinfall, and this is one of my favourite albums from him. But I feel that some of Marinfall's later albums were just a little bit better like Crossroads, which to me was just absolutely explosive. But I'd certainly put this one up there, but it's a little bit different, and it kind of sits on the other side compared to the other guys and their debut albums. So featured on this album, we got Cheat Career, Jim Cox, John Patitucci, Vinnie Collata, Pat Kelly, Frank Gambali, and Louis Conti. So again, you know, great cast of musicians. Marinfall does utilize all their skills and showcases them to the fullest and lets these guys do their thing. But I feel with Marinfall, although this is his album, he almost kind of just lets the guys take the lead. Whereas with Patatucci's album, it was very much his album. He composed everything, he did it all. With Marinfall, he more or less just plays the sax while everybody else does the work, which there's nothing wrong with that, but you don't really get to hear what Eric Marinfall is like as a composer and arranger. He does compose one track, which was with him and Tim Landers, and I think there's another track where he co-composed it with um, Chick Career, but... A lot of the contributions on this album were all written and composed by John Patitucci, Chick Career, uh, Pat Kelly as well. Marinfall doesn't really compose much on this album, and that's very strange because if you go through his catalogue of albums, most of his material is always composed by someone else. He co-composes, but you don't really see Marinfall front and centre as a composer. It's just my honest opinion. I'm just telling it like it is. Still a great sax player, still my man, but it's just an observation. So we got 12 tracks. We got two bonus tracks. So we got the title track, Voices of the Heart, which is just absolutely gorgeous. We got Your Eyes, which is a very breezy, sunny track, which sounds like you're on the beach. Blue Space, which is very much in the style of the electric band. I love it. It's absolutely brilliant. We've got the short but very soulful Brazilian dream. Absolutely brilliant as well. Prima Notion, another great track, which we get to hear Marinfall on electric wind instrument, the Iwi, which is quite a rare showcase. Absolutely beautiful. We've got Tipping, which is a very funky track, very much in the style of the electric band. Being With You. Another great track as well, featuring a great guitar solo from Frank Gambale. Harvest Dance, pretty much a very funky track, very good as well. Written in the Wind, which could have come from a Lee Rittner album. It was got a great guitar playing from Pat Kelly. We've got the hard-hitting Walk Like an Emu, another great track as well. Someone Said, which kind of sounds more like a rocky disco kind of track but still very good. And then we got the soaring 
Backstep, which has got a great bass solo from John Petitucci. But overall, I think Voices of the Hearts is a very strong album. But again, you don't really get to see Marin Fall front and centre as a composer. Great sax player, unbelievable solos, but I kind of feel like with Voices of the Heart, he just kind of like steps aside and lets everybody else do it, which is a shame really, because Marin Fall is one of the best in the world, but don't really get to hear it here, but still a great player. And, you know, he's my guy, but I wouldn't say this was a weak debut album, it's still great, but I just don't think maybe it wasn't as strong as some of the others that we talked about on here, but it's still very enjoyable. So the standout tracks for me are the title track, Voices of the Heart, Your Eyes, Blue Space, Brazilian Dream, Tipping, Being With You, Written in the Wind, and Backstep. A very good debut album from Eric Marinfall. Voices of the Hearts is one of my all-time favourites from Marinfall, but compared to Patatucci and Gambali's debut albums, I would say, and I'm not knocking it, I would say this is probably not as strong as those two debut albums. It's very laid back, much more leaning towards pop music, very much more in the smooth jazz kind of realm. And that's not a bad thing, but I feel that with Voices of the Heart, as good as it is, I feel like it's missing something. I feel like it doesn't quite have the energy of what the other two albums had. And as I said, as good as Voices of the Heart is, I just think maybe there are better Marinful recordings that maybe are a little bit more stronger. Take Crossroads, for example, absolutely excellent. And I put that up there with Voices of the Heart, but I think Crossroads maybe just might be a little bit better. If we could have swapped this around, maybe Crossroads was the debut album, we would be having a very different conversation. But at the same time, Voices of the Heart is very much like easy listening. And that's not a bad thing. But as I said, Marinfall is still my guy still my all-time favourite sax player. This is still one of my all-time favourite albums, but compared to the other two, as I said, it's just maybe just a little bit weak. So there you have it. Eric Marinfall, Voices of the Hearts, a good debut album, but as I said, there are better Marinfall recordings in his catalogue that I think maybe are just a little bit more stronger. So there you have it, Voices of the Hearts, good stuff. So we move on to the next debut album, which came out in 1990, this time from drummer Dave Weckl, and this one is called Master Plan. Now, Master Plan, what more can you say? Absolutely fantastic. For my money, one of the most important debut albums of all time, and very highly anticipated, and it absolutely delivered, and then some. This really shows how diverse Dave Weckl is, not only as a drummer, but as a composer as well. And just like John Patitucci's self-titled album, Master Plan combines the best of the electric band and the best of the acoustic band, all rolled into one. But this album, I wouldn't really say is a continuation of any of the electric band stuff or even any of the acoustic band stuff. It's very much its own thing. And that's what I really appreciated the most about Dave Weckl's debut album. He didn't try to make it sound like electric band 2.0 or anything influenced by Chick Corea. You can still hear his influence in the music, but Dave Weckl went out there to make a statement he didn't want it to sound like anything we hadn't heard before. And he certainly accomplished that. It's absolutely amazing. And some of Weckl's best drumming. And you do hear some little electronic percussion work with Dave Weckl. But it's all Weckl. He has never sounded better than he does here. So featured on Masterplan, 
we've got Chick Corea, Michael Brecker, Steve Gadd, Anthony Jackson, Jay Oliver, Jerry Hay, Bill Reichenbach, Tom Kennedy, Ray Kennedy, Eric Marinfall, Peter Mayer, and Scott Auspack. Not a bad little cast of musicians we got here. Some big names, some heavy hitters here. And Weckl utilizes all of the featured artists' skills and really lets them do their thing. And in a way, this kind of helped set the table for Dave Weckl's future working band, the Dave Weckl Band, as it featured two longtime collaborators, Jay Oliver and Tom Kennedy, who would pretty much serve as the foundation for the Dave Weckl Band. But this is excellent stuff here. So most of the compositions are co-composed by Dave Weckl and Jay Oliver, with the exception of one track composed by Jay Oliver, a couple by Peter Mayer, and we've got a standard by Romberg and Hammerstein, and one contribution from Chick Corea. But this is not what you'd call an electric band album. It's a Dave Weckl album. It's very much its own beast and very different to the other band members' debut albums. So we got Tower of Inspiration, which is inspired by Tower of Power. Great opener. Here and There. Hard hitting, very funky. Love it. Festival di Ritmo, which is kind of like a Latin flavored track. Absolutely brilliant with a great sax solo from Marinfall. In Common, very gorgeous, very atmospheric. And we got Garden Wall, which features great sax work from Brecker and great synth work from Chick Corea. We got the Aura Tune, which has got Dave Weckl and Jay Oliver playing together and got Scott Auspeck providing haunting vocals. One of my favorite tracks on this album. Softly as in a morning sunrise, which could have come from the acoustic band, which is a trio track featuring Tom Kennedy and Ray Kennedy. Absolutely beautiful. As I said, really captures the spirit of the acoustic band. And then we got the title track, Master Plan, featuring Chick Corea, Anthony Jackson, Jay Oliver, and the legendary Steve Gadd. And we actually get to hear a double drum duel between Weckl and Gadd. For me, the standout track of the entire album. Absolutely brilliant. And we've got the closer, Island Magic, which again features more of a Latin flavor to it. And we've got great synth work from Chick Corea and Jay Oliver, and some great percussion work via the electronic drums by Dave Weckl. Absolutely brilliant. In fact, I would go as far as to say that Master Plan from top to bottom is just remarkably strong and doesn't disappoint. Dave Weckl comes in with a bang and delivers a masterpiece. The standout tracks for me are In Common, Garden Wall, Or Tune, Softly as in a Morning Sunrise, the title track Master Plan, and Island Magic. For me, Master Plan absolutely kicks ass, and I have been going back to listening to this quite a lot, and as I said earlier, it sounds even better than when I first heard it. It just continues to get better and better with every listen, but I think it's absolutely brilliant album, and probably the strongest debut album out of all of the electric band members by far. So there you have it, Dave Weckl, Master Plan, excellent. So which electric band member debut album do I think is the best one? Well, in my honest opinion, I think all of them are fantastic. Obviously, there are a couple that I feel are a little bit better than others. But as I said at the beginning, each electric band member has their own diverse personality 
they all bring something different to the table and they all have a different style and approach to the way they play their music but if i had to choose one electric band member who i feel has the best debut album as much as i love frank gambali brave new guitar as much as i love eric marinfall voices of the heart and i absolutely adore the john patatucci self-titled album i have to go with dave weckle master plan i think it's a classic it's an important album this features dave weckle at his peak and it's just a tremendous album as i said the john patatucci self-titled album is my favorite but if I have to choose the best one, I have to go with Master Plan. I just think it's an amazing album. And yeah, I still listen to this one quite a lot. I listen to all of the debut albums, but I think I've been going back to this one more and more lately because there's just so much going on here. And the drumming is just out of this world. And it's got Steve Gadd. And, you know, anytime. You've got Steve Gadd and Chick Career on your album. You know it's going to be good. And Weckle's debut album didn't disappoint. I think it was absolutely brilliant. It made an impact and it delivered the goods and then some. So there you have it. Dave Weckle, Master Plan. For me, the best electric band member debut album out of all of the band members' debuts. Excellent stuff and I love it so that's going to be it from me i am going to wrap this up now which member of the chick career electric band do you think had the best debut album do you think it was frank gambali brave new guitar or john patatucci self-titled album eric marinfall voices of the heart or dave weckle master plan there's no right or wrong answer we all have our favorites you know what to do guys hit the like button hit the subscribe button leave your thoughts and comments down below and i will see all of you next time for another edition of the jazz albums review series so until then take care everybody and stay safe and once again as always much appreciated thanks for listening